Tonight, uh, the Attorney General breaks silence in Jackpot tape scandal, declaring he will prevail against element he accuses of setting traps for him. And that even though they've laid traps for me, I will flee from them. Meanwhile, we are also hearing for the first time from the third accused in the ambulance procurement trial, Richard Jackpa, who secretly recorded the AG as he demands justice. As expected by the Constitution, for her leadership to hold fidelity to the law, that is all. You think what has happened in the public court of public opinion would influence her ruling in any way? No, I don't expect it to influence her ruling. The evidence should be, her ruling should be based on the evidence. Well, tonight, Attorney General breaks silence in the Japa tape scandal, declaring he will prevail against the element he accuses of setting traps for him. The AG has been speaking for the first time since the NDC released what has been described by lawyers and the section of the public as incriminating audio evidence against him in the ongoing ambulance procurement trial. Meanwhile, we're also hearing for the first time from the third accused in the ambulance trial, Richard Jackpa, who secretly recorded the AG as he demands justice. Now, for, for, for first, what was the atmosphere in court? My colleague, Latif Idris, who was in court for us today and joins me with details. Latif, so you were there. Let us understand how the atmosphere was like in court. Yes, so unlike the previous sittings, today the court, the financial and economic court at the court complex, it was packed to the rafters. It was full, and we had a lot of people who had to stand outside the courtroom because they couldn't find space in there. Uh, we had NDC bigwigs uh, showing up in solidarity of the minority leader. We have members of parliament from the NDC who also showed up in solidarity of the minority leader. And so it was, it was a very anxious faces sitting in court, waiting to hear what the sitting judge had to say with regards to the applications okay. that, that are sitting before her as we now, speak. Now, you witnessed what happened there. So how was the proceeding like? Yeah, so the proceeding was was built to start at, at, at 12 o'clock midday. And the judge came in, I think, a minute before 12. So mm -hmm. she, was, she was on time. I mean, she even came before the time that has been advertised. Mm -hmm. And so when she sat in, the lawyers for Tadio Sorry, lawyers for Jakpa, that is the Ted accused, lawyers for Dr. Kesla to force in Aziz Bamba and the Attorney General, he was in court. Mm. Um, initially, he didn't contribute, and I'm sure we're going to get to to when the Attorney General had to come in to address one or two issues. And then so there was back and forth, and the sitting judge listened to all the submissions that were made. And then she put forth that she is going to make a determination on the applications that have been filed and that she she wouldn't allow oral argument mm. because she has enough evidence before her to make a determination on the applications that are sitting on her table. And we know about the application. We know about the call for mistrial mm. and that's some of the accusations or allegations mm. should be struck out. That's from so, Richard so we Jappa. know that for Richard Jappa, he is yeah. applying for an order striking out the charges, charges against and him. terminating the proceedings or alternatively staying the proceeding against the third accused or a, a stroke applicant here. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. so that is for Richard Jappa. Mm. Yes. So that's the, the one of the applications sitting before the judge. We also know that uh, uh, Dr. Casey Lato Forsen is also applying to the court to for a mistrial, for a mistrial. Mm. and there was also one which is asking for the live telecast mm. of the proceedings which we understand that the chief justice 
uh, has jurisdiction over that one. Okay. We don't have a determination on that yet. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a point where the AG and Thadio Sorry were disagreeing on capacity of a deponent. Exactly. So, you, if you recall, there's been an application filed on behalf of the Attorney General uh, challenging Mr. Jackpot's application that the cases against him to be struck out or a stay. Now, that deposition wasn't filed by Mr. Goffred Dami himself. Mm -hmm. It was filed by a principal state attorney. Now, Mr. Tadiosori or lawyer Tadiosori's case is that the principal state attorney didn't have the capacity to file that affidavit in opposition. Uh, but the AG was quick to respond to that. He said that no, Mr. Tadosori wasn't right and that the principal state attorney had the right and had the capacity to file that affidavit and that he referenced paragraph one of that particular affidavit in which the principal state attorney mentioned that he came across this information which had been captured in the affidavit in line of his duty in line of his duty working as a principal state attorney. Mm. Now, after the proceedings, the AG addressed the media. Yeah, and it was mm. very brief. So he came out and he was rushed. I mean, the, the media, the journalists around rushed him, wanting to know exactly how he felt about the proceedings. And he was quick in his word, saying that he is confident that at the end of the day, even though his enemies are setting traps in his way, he will prevail. All I can say is that the Lord does not delight in the pleasure of the wicked. And that even though they've laid traps for me, I will flee from them. And righteousness will always prevail over evil. Thank you very Amen. much. Bye bye. <laughs> 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 So that was uh, the Attorney General, yeah. very brief conversation yeah. there. Yeah. But we know that in court, as Aziz Bamba also talked about the tape and saw direction from the judge. Yeah, so there was the issue of admissibility of the tape. Now, Aziz Bamba, he wanted to know from the sitting judge whether or not the tape that has been submitted as part of the application by uh, Dr. Kessler to force in would be admitted in court and be played in open court. Mm -hmm. Now, if you listen to the sitting judge, she said that once the tape is in court, she would assess it. Mm -hmm. she, wouldn't, she didn't say explicitly whether the tape will be played in open court or otherwise. Mm -hmm. But what we can report is that she said that once the tape is in the court's custody, the court would assess the tape okay. as to whether or not this would inform the final decision or mm. her ruling. Mm. We are unable to tell because she didn't say that in open court. All she said was that once the tape is in the custody of the court, the court would assess the mm. tape. But, but earlier, the originator of that said tape spoke to you. What did he say? Yeah, so Richard Jaqua was in court. He was in high spirit, in fact. And so I caught up with him before he entered the courtroom. And he said that, yes, he's put out the tape. Uh, the Ghanaian people have listened to the tape. He, he expects that the judge has also listened to the tape. And the fact that now that he's been tendered in as evidence with the application that have been filed, he expects that the judge will do nothing but justice for him is for him to walk free. Do you expect... Uh, Mr. Godfrey Dami to be in court today. Is that your expectation? Well, he's supposed to be in court because he's attorney general. And this issue is personally between he and I. You know, if, so if, he if, he he if he doesn't show up, how, how would you feel if he doesn't show up? The court to determine that. Mm -hmm. So, again, you want to reiterate that at the end of the day, you would be exonerated. You are not going to jail. Because I'm, what, a, I'm an innocent man. What, what do you make of the position that the tape you put out it's a doctor tape. Well, they are claiming it's a doctor tape. I didn't say that. So it should be in the original. Mm. 
you should tell it the original to the court. But why did you record the Attorney General? Well, that is not for you. <laughs> he says you've been disingenuous. But that's what he claims. If that he was a private... He was a private... prosecuting innocent people, who is disingenuous? It was a private conversation, and now you I put it you out. Claim it's a private conversation. That's what he says. Well, well private conversation, when it's, it's, a, it's a conversation that leads to committing crimes, it can no longer be private. It becomes a crime against the state. So it can no longer be private. So that private claim is, is neither here nor there. The, the point, bottom line is you didn't tender that in evidence. My lawyer, I'm not a lawyer. My lawyer knows his strategy. And he understands the court processes more than I do. So he's doing what is required of by him. He has got his own strategy. And I cannot detect to him his so, strategy. So at the end of the day, you expect that you're going to walk? Well, there must be justice. And I'm here seeking for justice. So justice, anything other than you walking free will be well, injustice? I cannot decide that I'm walking free. It is her ladyship who decide based upon the evidence I used before her. Mm. The evidence will lead to that. And I know she's going to hold fidelity to the law. And that's what is expected of her. And that's exactly what I said. I know she'll be doing. So I don't have any issue at all. Are you looking forward to a face-off between you and Mr. Godfrey Dami? No, it can't be a face-off. Face to face. Let me put it that way. Face to face. No, face to face. We are dealing everything in court. Mm. My lawyers will deal with it. In court, I mean, in court. Uh, but how can I cross examine him? My lawyer will do that. So there's nothing like face to face. Have you it's seen an him? Issue of evidence against evidence. You see, the game is about evidence. That is all. Have you seen him since you put out the tape? Have you seen the attorney general after putting out the tape in the Not public domain? Not at all. Has he reached out to you? Not at all. Have you reached out to him? Not at all. So there was a CJ, a Justice of the Supreme Court involved. Has he reached out to you? Not at all. Well, so that is uh, the third accused in this whole issue, Richard Jackpot there. Richard Jackpot. But when do we expect to have rulings on the applications? So on the 6th of June, that is this coming Thursday, we expect uh, the sitting judge to make a ruling on all the applications sitting before her. Thank you. Top story here on Joy New Joy uh, FM 99.7. Let's go on to the phone lines now and have some interactions on this particular matter. We're being joined on the line by Martin Pebu, who is a private legal practitioner, and also by Sami Jemfi, who is NDC's national communications officer. He was in court today. Let me start with you, uh, Martin Pebu, on this particular matter. The AG is raising some concerns about the applications on the table. Now, one of them is that the, his prosecutorial powers cannot be injuncted by anyone. Uh, is, it, is it that his powers can be injuncted? And if yes, what conditions will elicit that particular injunction? Your work. Some- when he says his prosecutorial powers cannot be injuncted, generally, as a principle of law, yes, that's equally nothing on to what has happened. That's equally nothing on to what is happening. But where um, something on to what is happening, yeah, it happens. Look, and maybe it's a play of words. Let's say generally, the words that they use, what I'm uh, familiar with is that the court would grant an order of stay of proceedings once it's found that the contents of the state are authentic and true. So, and the stay of proceedings is stopping the whole trial. So I don't think much depends on the word injunction. Everything depends on whether he said those things or not. So it's not about the word. Because there is a Supreme Court decision, uh, Republic versus Bafuboni, that endorses the remedies. One of the remedies for failure to disclose something like this, this prosecutorial misconduct, is stay of proceedings. Yes, stay of proceedings. So that is effectively what 
a court will grant if the charges are made out. That is to say the infractions that we all heard in the tape. If they are made out, yeah, so nothing turns on the use of the word injunction. No, uh, I wouldn't spend much time on that, the, the use of that word. Mm. Bottom line is that if evidence is, if this tape is found to be credible enough, it meets the standard, yes, you will get the court stopping the trial. Mm. That's it. But, but so, so what standards must the tape meet before it is admitted in court? So there are the, the issues of the authenticity and not being doctored. The authenticity and not being doctored. So that's how come I'm wondering uh, how this is going to be done, considering that the experts weren't called to say, okay, this is authentic, this is not, etc. So, but we'll leave it for the court to uh, decide. So I thought uh, we we're going to hear evidence being adduced about the authenticity, etc. Right? Yeah, because some are saying, you see, what they're saying is doctored, it's actually about editing it, right? Yes, editing it. So, it's, uh, you know, at a point you would hear that, uh, that it had been said that the tape is 26 minutes long, but it turned out being 16, where is the extra 10 or so, even if it's not 26, a certain figure, 26 or so, is it 23? Whatever, but it was 20 something, but the tape itself is 16 point something minutes. So, where is the extra, those kind of things? But so far, you see that he's not running away from the content. But as for law, there's also a huge regard for procedure. So for now, you see, it's difficult to tell. Because the authenticity and those things have not been gone into, it's difficult to tell. But the contents are really damaging. And for me, that is where we should be looking at. That means it's not denying the content. He's not denying that that was his voice. He's not denying that he said those very damning things. And so even if I were him, I don't even know what moral authority he had to enter the court. But now he should have been out of that office. This, this, today's proceedings, his appearance in court and everything just tells you that this country, there's really a big problem. We have a very huge problem with our ethics. Mm. It tells you that there are no adults in this country. Yeah, when I say adults, I'm speaking locally. That's it. We don't have real statesmen. Yeah, we don't have real state. We may have some people who call themselves statesmen, but they are not real. No. Okay. Tell, I'm telling you, uh, Mr. Grace, the contents of this state are so damning that by now, damage should have been booted out of the office long time, long time but, ago. But I mean, whilst he has not... Well, well, it's not surprising because that's the same way he behaves. He's also very corrupt. So, like father, like son, kind of... But, 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 I, 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 aren't you being... I, I mean, you're just... When you say that you're being... Uh, it looks like you have evidence that, that, that says that, yes, this man is corrupt, and that's why you're saying so. Oh, absolutely, but the evidence is all out there. One, the Kufado said corruption is when you bring family and friends into government. And this government is awash with its relations. Uh, yes, Okuriata has not totally resigned. He's only been moved from finance ministry formally. But on paper, he was still in Washington in, in the IMF negotiations. He said what? presidential advisor on what capital markets etc he's still there you have which other listen his brothers all over relations so many appointments friends ah, it's a family and friends government so by his own definition of corruption that is it number two you are not here when the, the kufado padded the ameri deal by 800 million dollars had not been for ndc ndc caught him then he said that he was misled by what he jaco said no he wasn't in the transaction. It was Gabi. Mm. It was Gabi who led the transaction. So between Kufadu and Gabi, they were going to steal $800 million. Can you imagine? And we are here okay. talking. Let, Ghana, let, mm. okay, there's something wrong with this whole country. The men in this country are not men. Maybe we look physically like men. But okay. mentally, there so, are no So, Lea, stay with me. Let me, br let me bring in an, a, a colleague of yours, Nana Bafo, uh, the Nai J. Bafo, who is also a private uh, legal practitioner. Lawyer, so if the attorney general is not speaking to the content of that recording, could it be a strategy for him to wait till he gets his chance in court to defend himself? <laughs> um, thank you very much, and good evening to your listeners and my very good friend Martin Pebble. Um, I think that before I go there, let me quickly react to certain things. First and foremost, we need to distinguish 
constitutional jurisdiction from the procedural jurisdiction of the court. They are two separate things. The constitutional jurisdiction is the source of its authority, is the power given to the court to be able to resolve matters that come before it. The procedural jurisdiction is the power of the court to manage the proceedings before it. There are two different things. Now, if you say that the court may not be able to grant an injunction to restrain the performance of a court, grant state of proceedings, I, you know, I don't know very respectfully the basis for which that conclusion came to, has, you know, my brother has come to that position. Be that as it may, law is about positions, and we all have bases for forming certain positions. However, I disagree with them. Mm. You cannot use procedural jurisdiction to interfere with the performance of the constitutional power. And that is why you cannot even use an injunction to restrain the performance of a constitutional duty. Even if when that responsibility is also being abused in a way? If it is being abused, very respectfully, if it is the exercise of a discretionary power under Article 296 and 23 of the Constitution, it is required that when you have a discretionary power, you should exercise it in a manner which is candid, which is fair, right? And, you know, it doesn't amount to an abuse. Okay, and so the court can scrutinize it. The court can scrutinize it to determine whether or not it is being exercised in, in a manner which is candid, in a manner which is fair, right? But, you know, the court, in doing so, would then have to make a decision that it is an abuse of, of constitutional power. Okay. It's an abuse of discretionary power which is given to you under the Constitution. Mm. But the court would not inject the performance of a constitutional duty. The court will not also use procedural discretion, procedural jurisdiction to, in, to stay the performance of a constitutional duty. No, the court won't do that. In fact, in the case of Abu Ramadan versus the Electoral Commission, uh, the second case, the Supreme Court said it. The Supreme Court is always reluctant to interfere with the performance of a constitutional power, the exercise right. of a constitutional power. Okay. Indeed, thank you, Nana. I, I, I'm grateful. Indeed. But let me let me let me bring indeed. in Sami Jinfi here. He the speaks court for the. Is he reluctant. is the National Communications Officer of the NDC. Sami, you were in court today, and when you were speaking to the media, you sought to 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 claim that the Attorney General seemed to be running away from from his case. Why do you make that point? Oh, that is uh, very clear for every descending Guinean to see. Uh, serious um, avenues have been made by Mr. Jakpa, the third accused in this ambulance case, against the Attorney General. These are the testimony of Richard Jakpa under oath. He give oral evidence um, at the last agenda date when he was being cross-examined, I think on the 23rd of May 2024, and has proceeded to file a motion or notice supported with an affidavit, you know, reinforcing the evidence he gave on that fateful day, the 23rd of May 2024, which is basically to the effect that the Attorney General is on a witch hunt mission against Honorable Atoforsen, and that he has only added him, Richard Jackpot, to the case as a decoy. Um, in other words, to camouflage his real intentions, because according to Mr. Jackpot, he's had several in interactions with the Attorney General in which he has made it clear to him that he, Mr. Jackpot, has no case to answer, and that number two, uh, it is President Ekufuado and the former finance minister, Ken Oferiata, who uh, have been mounting pressure on him, Godfrey Dame, 
to imprison at of force and at all cost, even though he knows that he's innocent. These are damning, you know, assertions by a witness that border not only on professional misconduct or prosecutorial misconduct on the part of the AG, but also on crime. So what you will expect any prosecutor, any lawyer, any attorney general what is sought to do is to swear an affidavit in opposition to these, you know, very damning assertions of, of the third accused. You expect him to deny or to dispute these claims and demonstrate to the court that they are vexatious, scandalous, and false. But to our amazement, Godfrey Dami yet again decided to flee from accountability because but, he but has I mean, not he, been able he to, argues swear that, to any. He, he argues that this application, uh, you know, to uh, which is which is praying the court to stay proceedings, is unknown to criminal procedure and practice in Ghana. Is it not right there to say that if you're basing your argument on a recording that you have? That is not something that in criminal law we know, and therefore the court cannot grant that application. Please, that issue has not even come up for determination. So I don't know where you've gotten this issue of, um, 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 I mean, whether the court has powers to grant injunction. That issue has not even come up because today the oral arguments were not made. The applications were not even moved. The judge only said that he was going to determine the pending applications based on the affidavits. So I don't want to go there. My point is that Godfrey Dame has not been able to depose to any affidavit challenging the truthfulness of the assertions made against him by Mr. Jackpa. He has shifted the responsibility to a principal state attorney called Richard Jambibi, who was not on the call, which was recorded, the recording, or, 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 or we put out there. Neither was he in the several meetings Godfrey Dame had with Mr. Jackpa. He and I'm going for some. Let me, let me get some, some education Yet, here. This is the person. Let me get some education here from Lawyer Martin Pebu. Law, lawyer Martin Pebu, the, is the Attorney General asking uh, you know a state attorney uh, to to you know depose this application or affidavit on his behalf? Is he right or wrong? He is right. Yes, he can allow, Governor Damien can say anybody should do it for him, but what he does is that he weakens Godfrey's case. And that's what uh, Sami Genfi is saying, that Godfrey should have confronted um, Jakpa through the affidavit in opposition. But the fact that Godfrey is running away further shows that, yes, the contents of the tape are true. That's the point. Yes, you can ask anybody to swear to an affidavit. We have certain rules to be obeyed. Mm. In doing that, yes, okay. that's allowed. But in this case, it means that Jambibi is giving first hand PSA. That's first hand PSA. I'm informed by the Attorney General and believe him to be true that this, this, this. So okay. that's first hand because All right. it was uh, this one, Godfrey Dami, who went to the meetings and now, or he was, who was on the call. And he's now informing uh, Jambibi, and Jambibi is deposing to the affidavit. So that's so that's uh, lawyer Martin Pebu there. Uh, also in, in this conversation where Sammy, lawyer Sami Jenfi and lawyer Nana AJ Bafo. Uh, I'm grateful to you for listening. This has been Top Story. Up next is Newsnight.